Husband, 24M, won't pay bills. I don't know where to go from here. I came to this country to escape violent abuse and couldn't legally work while I waited for my visa to be approved. It was his idea for me to come over and he told me I'd be safer here, which is true. I walked dogs on the side for money so my partner wouldn't be the only provider for us, although he by far was still the breadwinner. A month before we got married, he got let go from his job for reasons that weren't his fault. That was nearly two years ago and ever since, he's not had another full-time job and has been accumulating more and more debt. I got my visa and paid over £3,000, three quarters of my life savings, to secure a flat for us. I immediately went into full-time work as soon as my visa was approved. He had a 10-hour-a-week job for about a month or two at one point but was also let go of that one. Since he's funded to go to uni, he got student loans every month deposited into his account but somehow the debt still kept piling and so did the beer cans when I got home at nearly midnight every night from work. I am so deep in my savings and said as much, but he tells me, you're not broke if you have savings. That's offensive to me who is in debt. All my wages have been going to rent, bills, and keeping us fed. Especially him with the last one since he likes to eat the house out while I'm away working. If I didn't work this much, he would have starved to death months ago. He said he didn't want to get another job because he was in fourth year of uni and needed to focus, but promised me he'd be responsible with his loan and that he'd find a side hustle like fixing computers or phones. None of that happened. Our electricity and gas bill has doubled and I still need to buy groceries. I was stressed and beginning to hallucinate from lack of sleep and overworking a physical job. I am having a few health concerns, but just cannot financially afford to take a day off. He got the hint to buy the damn groceries for once. The day they're meant to be delivered, he gets a call saying his card has been declined. That's when he lets me know he maxed his £2,000 overdraft over the past six months and has £30 to his name, on a credit card. I freaked out and asked him where all the money went only to see all the beer cans and remember every night he'd have a four-pack to drink to himself when I got through the door late at night from work. As well as video games and a fancy computer set up in our living room. Now there's no food. I caved and paid the bill myself when he reminded me of the other bills he needs me to pay this month. He tried to guilt me by saying he'll have to sell his switch and stuff. Though he doesn't appear to be in any rush because it's all still there and he's been on his ass drinking, playing video games, and giggling over movies. He told me not to worry because he is starting a new career in a few days and stressed how he'll be on more money than me. So I asked him, great. So that means your employer is giving you a generous upfront payment so you can help me with the £700 plus in bills coming out over the next week? He didn't get the sarcasm unfortunately, nor did he get the bigger picture. At this point, I want to leave him. But my visa depends on us being married. I have no good family or connections in my home country. I'm building my career here and all of my relationships are here. Which is hilarious that I, an immigrant am busting ass to keep myself and him, not an immigrant. Afloat but I'm the problem and if I leave his sorry ass, I am the one that suffers. We've been together for nearly a decade, so naturally I don't want to end it here, but if it wasn't for my visa, I'd be tempted to. I'm not quite asking for financial advice, just what the hell do I do to stop being mommy to a grown man? Seriously, stop paying the bills. I know that could put you in a precarious position as well, but he is counting on you to just step in every time. Stop doing that, or just pay the rent. Stop buying food, paying for internet, etc. Don't bring anything home. Eat all your meals out of the house. Don't pay the electricity. He won't like sitting around unable to play his games. You've escaped physical abuse only to land in financial abuse. Luckily financial abuse is recognized as a form of abuse in the UK. Maybe contact a couple of women's aid societies or a citizen advice bureau. They can likely put you in contact with who you need to help you. I believe you can also speak to your GP as well as a number of immigrant support groups. You're not alone in this op, there's bunches of orgs that can help you out, you just have to find them. It is unfortunately common for female immigrants to be exploited on marriage visas and as such there have been protections put in place. If you are barely home anyways, but pay for everything there, make it uncomfortable. Change Wi-Fi password or cancel internet completely. Don't bring home any food. Pay only for the unavoidable. At this point, he is using you and it seems like his only use is providing a visa. Figure out how long you depend on him for that. Prepare to leave. If you want to stay with him, he needs to show you that he can act responsibly. Sell his switch and PC. 
really everything he doesn't need to look for jobs or study. For most degrees you don't need a fancy PC and students can use Wi-Fi on campus to study. Get rid of his debt and show actual change to not accumulate new debts. How much longer do you have to be married? You should open a savings separate account that he neither knows about nor can he touch. Then just say you know money and stop subsidizing him. He will work when he sees he needs money. Update. I've read all of these, thank you. He ended up selling his switch, but hasn't sent it out yet so we'll see. I was heading to a coffee shop to get away, but he followed me out and then insisted on paying for it with the money he made for the switch. He hasn't apologized but did say I, made him, drink six glasses of whiskey last night and he's tired of me making him feel, dumb, currently typing this at the table. He seems embarrassed. He's wearing his wedding ring but I am not. Let's see what he does. Op. Follow the legal advice you have received here. Just to add. Do not tell your layabout that you're mobilizing the law against him. You don't want him cleaning the house or destroying documents ahead of the inspection, and especially you don't want him disappearing his valuables, loaning to a friend his computer, game consoles and games, and I guess his car, ahead of a reposition, seizure. Stomach bug in the house and my wife, 41F, is petrified of throwing up. What do I, 39M, do? My daughter, 4F, came down with a stomach virus on Memorial Day. She puked five or so times over six hours and had diarrhea for the first day but quickly recovered. I took care of her primarily since my wife's biggest fear is throwing up. She hasn't thrown up in almost 30 years which I feel like makes it worse since she can't remember that it sucks but it's not the end of the world. We cleaned the house really well and took lots of precautions but I eventually got it a week later. I have been quarantined upstairs for almost 48 hours now and my wife is freaking out even more. She won't touch our daughter, is barely eating since she feels that everything is tainted, especially the fridge, freezer, and says she won't feel comfortable for almost a month since I could be contagious for up to two weeks and then it can live on surfaces for two weeks. I tried to be supportive early on during this ordeal but I finally snapped at her today and told her that she has to decide if her fear of throwing up is more than her fear or losing my daughter and I because we can't go on like this forever and I know this won't be the last stomach bug in the house and I don't want my wife's fear to traumatize our daughter. Any advice is appreciated. Thanks. So I agree with the comment above. I have emetophobia which is the fear of throw up, throwing up. Cognitive behavioral therapy is a very effective form of therapy to help your wife change her thoughts on throwing up. It's a journey for sure but it helps. I see both sides. I know the fear but I definitely know that it ruins everyone else's time who is around the person with emetophobia. I'm sorry you guys are going through this. Your wife needs therapy. Can you get a cleaner in to disinfect the surfaces? A family member? That would be a temporary solution. The bigger problem is the phobia that your wife has. Ignoring her small child, feeling everything is tainted, and potentially disposing of all the food in the freezer is falling firmly into needs therapy territory. You can't let that one lie untouched even if you get through this episode. Your wife needs therapy. Kids are germ factories and they will bring home every cold, flu, etc. that they come in contact with. There is no avoiding getting sick as you can currently attest to. It's not acceptable that she's treating your daughter like a pariah because she got sick. I get being fearful of vomiting. I am one of those individuals, but when my husband is sick, I still take care of him to a point. When he's spewing I'll stand outside the bathroom door and make sure he's okay. I get him everything he needs and make sure he doesn't have to climb the stairs. But I would underscore underscore never underscore underscore make him feel gross, disgusting, and like I don't want anything to do with him. This is likely how your daughter feels right now. Kids don't gaff if you're scared, they just want you there. She needs serious therapy for this. The last stomach bug that I had, I made sure to take Pepto pills to make it came out the bottom and not the top. Works out pretty well. I have emetophobia as well and I've been in therapy for it and take medication. I can tell you one thing telling her that she has to decide between an uncontrollable fear and her daughter you're not exactly helping. My dad tried the same approach with me and it's one of the reasons I don't have a relationship with him today. Also emetophobia has roots in OCD which is why her behavior is out of her control it's compulsive triggered by intrusive thoughts. Moved cross country with my girlfriend who ended up cheating on me. What do I do? My girlfriend went to hang out with a new friend she made. I know this was wrong of me but I looked through her texts and found her going on a date tonight. It's crushed me. We moved across the country together a little over half a year ago. 
Since then she's been battling depression and has lost her job. I admit it's hard for me to console somebody who is depressed and maybe I haven't done the best job at that but I think I've been doing the best I can in every other department. This is the second time she's done this. The first time I decided to forgive her. I know, I should have left. But between now and then she said countless times jokingly that I'd never leave her. I'm guessing it's because I didn't leave the first time. I value myself too much to deal with this anymore. I feel terrible telling somebody who is unemployed and thousands of miles away from family to find their own place and to get out of my apartment. What do I do? Too long did not read. Do I kick my cheating girlfriend out who has no job and no money, and is thousands of miles away from family to help? Edit. Do I tell her I looked through her phone? Update. It's been two hours since she said she would be home. Seen her location and she's been sitting in a parking lot for an hour. Update 2. She came home. I confronted her and asked if she went on a date. She said no and she does not know where this is coming from. Then she started to cry hysterically and tell me about her depression and stress. I will not be returning to Reddit again because, ya yeah know what, I am just over myself and my embarrassing behavior of not sticking up for myself upside down face fuck me. Update 3. I am back on Reddit. I told her I wanted to break up. I didn't tell her how I found out she was cheating. So because of that she tried to gaslight me and tell me it's my paranoia and stress, and that she was never cheating, and she told me I'm breaking up with her for no reason. I refused to go any further with the conversation. I am tempted to text the girl that she went on a date with and tell her to support here like I've been doing for 5 months. FYI. I am 25F. XGF is 25F. Depression is not an excuse and going on a date behind your back is fucking disgusting and it's even more insulting she's doing this to you when she's living off you. Kick her out immediately, new guy can look after her. Her not having money or family around isn't your problem and stopped being your issue when she decided to cheat on you. Leave yesterday. End the relationship and offer her a trip back to her family. So she's been using you this entire time? Throw her in the trash. Make yourself your priority. This is toxic of me but, show up to the date lol in all seriousness though, leave her, and you don't owe her an explanation. Offer her a way back home to her parents. Boyfriend got his fling pregnant. I'm 8 months pregnant and just found out. Background. I've been with my boyfriend for 2 years, we both are in our 30s, previously divorced, fell in love fast and knew what we wanted in our next relationship and moved quickly. Bought a house together after a year and I got pregnant a few months after that. Neither were particularly interested in marriage again and were happy with the commitment of buying a home, having a family without marriage. Before anyone comments on it being a bad idea to buy a home with someone outside of marriage, we contribute 50-50 and already had a legal contract written with our real estate lawyer upon closing on our home should a split happen in the future. He had issues with excessive drinking and cheating in his past relationships and marriage but was upfront with me when we met about his issues and how he addressed them through therapy. Fast forward to now, we've been living in our home for a year and I am 8.5 months pregnant with our son who was conceived intentionally. I thought we were in a very healthy and stable relationship and we have always had, what I thought was, open communication and trust. One issue has been my disapproval of his drinking because he has had so many issues in the past with it, and I thought he stopped early in my pregnancy. Last week, I got a screenshot from my sister of a woman who was looking for me and asking me to text or call her because she had some information I would want to know. I googled the number and a familiar name comes up my boyfriend's co-worker who I have met twice in passing and never thought twice about. I confronted him as to why she would be contacting me and within a minute he breaks down and says, she trapped me, over and over and tells me his version. He slept with her twice last fall during a time he was drinking a lot socially with friends and downplaying his drinking to me. She was a co-worker who had a crush on him and they were friendly, she asked him to come over while he was out drunk, he stopped by on his way home from a night out and she was all over him and they slept together before he came home to me. This happened once in late October and once in late November. Keep in mind we were trying to conceive in October and I found out I was pregnant in early November. She told him she was pregnant in January and he told her he would not have anything to do with her aside from child support if she chose to keep it. Also keep in mind she knew we were together, had met me twice before they slept together and knew I was pregnant by the time she shared her news with him. He claims he had no contact with her since January, they have opposite schedules at work, and that he asked her not to reach out to me because he wanted me to hear the news first. 
She threatened to find me, my family, and his family and had actually been successful in contacting his family. He claims that he was going to tell me after our child was born, because I've had so much anxiety this pregnancy already and didn't want the stress to cause health issues. I asked for texts, DMs between them but he of course had deleted them months ago so I wouldn't discover his secret through them. In my shock in the moments of him telling me all this, I texted the woman, which I regret. Her story is obviously very different that he diminished the seriousness of our relationship, saying we were on and off, and that they had a fling, not just drunken sex a couple times. I asked if she had screenshots to show me when they were together or demonstrate his lies that he hadn't already confessed, and she sent me one very pieced together message with no date or timestamp that didn't really support her claims. She said she wouldn't send me any other screenshots unless we met in person, which I have no interest in doing. I asked her what her motive was for contacting me and she seemed all over the place my interpretation was that she wanting to shit on my boyfriend and make me as miserable as her I got the impression that she didn't get her way with him being involved with her after discovering he was pregnant, so everyone involved should be miserable not that I wouldn't be miserable hearing this news anyway. I am obviously shocked and devastated at this news, thinking I was in a happy relationship when meanwhile my boyfriend was hiding this huge secret for months. The layers of deception are truly killing me, and not knowing what to believe is torture. But the fact is, he cheated, likely got her pregnant, he has a lawyer already and is doing a DNA test when her baby is born, went to great lengths to hide said cheating and pregnancy from me, then confessed when he knew he had no other choice, I'm due with his child in six weeks and she is due with his child in three months. He has fully taken blame for what happened, seems incredibly remorseful, and come up with steps to attempt to rebuild trust so that we can try to have a shot at being a family unit, to start, on meetings, staying sober, going back to therapy, couples therapy for us. If he had just cheated I could see these changes being an option but having another woman pregnant, and a woman who seems unstable and conniving at that, brings a whole other depth of issues to work through. I have no idea what to do. I felt overwhelmed with becoming a first-time parent before finding this news out and now my anxiety and stress and overall sadness is off the charts. I feel so many opposing emotions I love my boyfriend but am so angry he put me in this situation. I feel that I owe my unborn son a shot at having a two-parent household, but also can't imagine sticking around and letting my boyfriend get away with such a huge betrayal. I also have no idea if I feel more willing to work on things right now because I am feeling more vulnerable at this point in my pregnancy or I will change my mind after birth. I know I have a lot of soul searching to do and feel like this is more of a venting post, but just want to hear if anyone had been in a similar situation. Any thoughts, advice at all on managing this really awful situation? Edit. I want to clarify that I do 100% blame my boyfriend for this entire mess. It was entirely his doing and the other woman owed, owes me nothing. I can't trust his version of the story after he lied to me for months. However, I also don't trust a woman who involved herself with someone she very clearly knew was in a relationship. I got a bad feeling from the way she was communicating with me. It wasn't a hey I'm sorry this happened, woman supporting women in a shitty situation type conversation. It seemed very attention and drama seeking on her part and when I said I didn't feel comfortable meeting in person without her at least sending me time stamped, dated screenshots that showed when they met up or any context of their fling she refused and turned hostile and mean. I never blamed her for anything in our text conversation and was quite cordial to her considering what I had just found out. Yeah, so she tricked him twice and she's just making it all up to trick you into leaving the trashy alcoholic that cheats on all his wives' girlfriends? Does this really seem reasonable to you? Do you really think he's a prize you're competing with her for? Whoever wins him is the actual loser in this scenario. Imagine your child coming to you with all of this someday when they're grown up what would you tell them? That they're worth more than this? That they deserve better? Tell yourself that. He seems like a dishonest weasel of a dude to try and blame drinking and the girl for having sex with her and as for the girl she knew you guys were together and didn't have no issue when it was just sex. He will be a terrible role model for your child. If you want your son to grow into a decent man you need to have a conversation with yourself and ask, what's best for you and what's best for your son? They both made adult decisions and they need to deal with adult consequences. This is a man who cheated on you, lied to you, and was perfectly happy with abandoning one of his children. Is that really who you want to waste your life with? Growing up with an alcoholic parent is a way more damaging adverse childhood experience than growing up in a single-parent household. 
Nah. I stopped reading after, she trapped me. No she didn't, boy bye. I feel so terrible for those kids that haven't been born. Sounds like a future loser dad. 